seamless layer. And I just work my way up the head. So right up here we have a hard line. See the hard line? We want to get rid of the hard line. So just take it and cut into it. Michael? I'm just softening up the layers. So you just, everybody can see I turn. See, right now I'm not going to fan it out too much because her hair is spreading out all over the place. We need some hair to cut. Now you see it's got a little like line right there. It's a little harder or longer. So in here I go a little deeper. When you're doing dry cutting like this, you want to use a long blade. Okay, a little tiny blade. You're going to be not. You want to go into the hair and really cut it. Okay. They also have curved blades, and a curved blade works really well. But you want get like a seven-inch blade. A seven-inch blade is one of your best friends. You do a lot of different things. If you want a blunt, straight line, it's a lot better. If you get the little tiny five-inch scissor, you just chip, 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 chip. With the long blade, one snap and it's gone, it's clean, it's nice. You could do scissor over comb with it. That's just one of the best tools around, I think. So earlier today, um, Alec was doing a bit of an ombre up on our little stage up front. And he was using 10 volume and our lightener. This has hydrolyzed collagen within it, so it maintains the integrity and the texture of the hair. So like you said, no need to add any additional plexus or any of those into this. It's already really great for the hair. Seven levels of lift, on and off scalp. So using great products and making sure that your client's integrity of the hair is intact is key. Right now, Alan is using at the root in our color chart, he's using a 522. And what that is is a five violet violet. So a very nice violet tone that he has at the root, darkening it. And at the very end, we have a 9117, which is our gothic. The grays and the metallics are very popular right now. And we added a little bit of the intensive of the blue. So we have a little bit more of a blue metallic gray. Okay. And the key thing is uh, my balayage application it just take me every day I do like almost 15 minutes for my application for long hair. Just 15 minutes. Uh, why is that? Because while you think everything you miss two solutions together and you land the process for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, which is already done, which is the oxidation already done in the bowl, it's not in the hair. So I, I always do it myself, you know as fast as I can because I want the strength of the oxidation beginning work of two solutions made together is work best in the hair. Uh, so that's the reason why I always do it, like I always tell the people like, oh, I have to do it fast, 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 because the faster the better it's get, you know, time's money, not really. It's better for the hair to get it on more evenly instead of taking two hours to put the color on, the one side's done, and you're trying to rinse that side out and making a mess and just working on the other side. You know, I think practice just picking up your speed with the colors, that's really important. And you know, I think hair colors, it's really easy to sell. Hair color is something that it's gonna make you the money. I think hair color, I love it. It's my hobby that I get paid for, you know. So what I do is when I have my client in the chair for the consultation, I'll definitely talk about color. A lot of times somebody will come in with a beautiful color and they say, I say, who does your color? It's beautiful. What you first want to do is compliment them on their color. You don't want to say, ooh, who did your color? You know, you're going to hurt their feelings. You're going to make them feel bad. You want to make them feel good. Tell them, oh, this is a beautiful color. Oh, I did it myself. Oh, very nice. This would make a great, you know, a base tone for a dimensional color. They're going to say, what's a dimensional color? Well, if we use this color as the base, it's really pretty and shiny, it's nice. 
but we could use it as a base and we could put some low lights and some highlights in there. It's going to bring it alive. You know, the darker pieces will create a background for the lighter pieces to reflect off of. It's going to add more shine. It's going to add more dimension, more movement to the hair. It brightens it up and brings it alive. Next thing you know, they want it. You know, so hair color is not real hard to sell. You have to know what to sell to who. Like demi colors. So let me talk about this. There's three different types of colors. You have permanent color, demi colors, and semi colors. Permanent colors does two things. A permanent color it lightens and it deposits at the same time. So a lot of times you'll darken the hair with a permanent color and it looks like it didn't lighten, but when the color fades off, you'll see where it's lightened, where you get the regrowth. Permanent color is great for people that need permanent color. Permanent color is good for like the little old ladies that have a lot of gray and you have to get 100% gray coverage. A demi color, it lasts just as long as a permanent color. The only difference is a demi color does not lift, it only deposits, it's just straight deposits. So that's good for somebody that has like a lot of gray, like a man that doesn't want to have a regrowth problem or roots. You know, they want it to fade off, they want it to look natural. Demi color, you put it on, it blends the grays in. It may not cover 100%, but it's a good friend to you. You know, it's good to sell to those people that don't want to have permanent color. What I often do is, like, if I'm going to do an all over color, is I will start off, like, at the scalp area, do a permanent color to cover up the gray, and then you put demi color on the ends. Okay? I use a lot of semi colors. A semi color is a deposit only color. It's, you don't put, it's like the bright colors, like the bright reds or purples or greens or blues. You don't usually put developers in with those. And you know, they're gonna fade off a lot faster. I use those like for photo shoots and just for fun kids or whatever. So you know, that's the three types of colors. So you gotta know which one does which and how to sell your colors to your clients. So it's actually pretty easy. When they're at the consultation, you talk about now that you're getting your color, you want to invest in keeping your color and making it so that it doesn't fade off until you have shine and you know everything. And so that's when you sell them the products. This is what I would recommend to keep up your product, your your hair, so the color is not going to fade off so fast. So you know, hair color and and uh, hair cutting, it's like a marriage. They belong together. If you have a nice haircut and the color's not there, it's just not complete. You have to have the color to really make it wow, you know? So that's a little thought on that. How many of you like color in here? Like red color? Awesome. Yeah, like what he said, color is definitely where your money is going to be made. And what makes the difference between a great colors and just an okay colors is knowing the color wheel. I know a lot of you see it now as students. Make sure you emblazon this into your brain. <clears throat> this is the key to knowing where you want to go and what your client already has going on in their hair. So for instance, if we have a client who has a lot of copper in their hair, what do we use to get rid of that copper? Blue. Blue, exactly. We go across from the color star and that's what we need to use. What if they have copper and red in their hair and they tell you that they do not want to see any work at all? What are you going to use? Green, that's one of them. And blue, very important to know both because if we just put green into our formula, we get rid of the red, but we still see copper. So very, very important to know your color star also the RPCs. Does anybody know what RPCs stand for? I do. <laughs> Michael. Remaining pigment contribution. And what that is, is when you start to lighten your hair, you're going to see the color change. At first it'll go to a reddish, and then to an orangey red, and then to an orange, and a yellowy orange, and a yellow. You know, so it works its way down this list. So you have to know where you're lightening your hair to, so it's either going to contribute or you're going to want to cancel it out. So an underlying pigment contribution is one of the main things about hair color. You have to know which underlying pigment you're at. So each underlying pigment contribution has a number. Like a level 7 would be an orange, 
Um, a level six would be like an orangey red, a level five would be a red, and it works its way down. So you have to figure where you're gonna go with your color, how much lift you're gonna get out of your color, what do you need to enhance or to cancel off that color? Because the remaining pigment contribution is half of your hair color. It shines right through your color and it's, it's part of it. Very important. So knowing your RPCs and your color star, key to being a great colors, okay? The next thing is to also to make sure that you consult, and we talked about consultation, consult with your client. Find out ahead of time what they don't like. And it's up to you as a professional to find out what are they liking about their hair? What do they not like about their hair? A lot of times they'll just sit and not say anything. They're intimidated. But it's you as a professional to get those questions out of them. I find that I have less problems in the very end result. They're happy with what I've done because I've taken time to have that consultation. And I know I have done my homework. I have my color start. I have my RPCs. I know where I want to go and how I can get there. Is there any questions that you may have about color or cutting? 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 <laughs> cutting? We have a lot of years of hairstyle experience on this stage. So you as students, it is like information time for you. So don't be shy. Just ask a question. No question is too small. Now, if anybody has any questions at How long have you been doing hair, Michael? I've been doing hair over 40 years now. I started as a barber stylist. I did barbering for about five years, and then I went into cosmetology. But even as a barber, you know, I was doing a lot of color. Color is my hobby that I get paid for. I feel like you guys may not know it, but we're some of the luckiest people in the world. This job is the best job you could ever have. It makes you feel good. It makes the clients feel good. You know, you tell them how pity they are, they go, Ooh, you know. Um, it's just a wonderful job, you know. It's more like a hobby you get paid for. And when it's your hobby, it's not really like going to work and, you know, having to bust your butt and everything. It just kind of comes natural and it flows and it's a lot of fun. I love being in the salon. It's just kind of more than a job. It's like a lifestyle. It's just fun. And I'm sure you'll all agree with that. Okay. What about you, Alan? How long have you been doing here? Yeah, uh, Alan làm tóc uh, tới ngày hôm nay và Alan làm được uh, 32, 33 năm. Uh, hai tuần nữa hoặc ba tuần nữa là Alan sẽ có mặt ở Việt Nam sẽ làm một cái chương trình rất là lớn ngoài Hà Nội với Sài Gòn uh, làm với một cái công ty hãng mỹ phẩm của Ý uh, cũng dạy về cái thuật uh, balayage. I'm sorry, I have been doing hair over 32 years or 33 years so on my belt. I'm young, you know, I'm 30 something. And I still love, uh, yes, yes. I still love what I do, do what I love, okay? And one thing I want to strongly point out the product I have been using for the past two days is, I don't, I don't know what to say, is, you know, like, I love it. This because it's so amazing. You know, I've been high, I, I, I've been using 20 volume yesterday on the root area and 10 volume at the end with the bleach, and then I do on on the top of it with the color, the toner. Yeah, and today I'm able to pull day, it out. Second day in a row. He's yeah, this and look at the hair. The, yeah. the hair porosity is still strong. It's still shiny. The hair cuticle is not blow out. You know, the thing you want to look at the people work, especially colorists, is all you look at beautiful picture. But you try to zoom out, look at the end, look at the end of the hair. You can tell, you can tell that the color is level of skill, okay? Because, you know, like I've been doing hair for like many years. I use different brands, you know. I teach you with different product lines as well. And I don't use all of flex. I don't use any flex, but, you know, I love sex, but, you know, I don't use flex. Just, you, know, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, but but I do have to do something like nice because if people Google it, it will show my salon and come over so long. But the thing is, I want to do, you know, which is like I just have had something wrong yesterday. Today to come over, I'm able to pull it out, which is that a great product, okay? That's a great product. The kind of product you able to put in and you able to get out. That's the thing you want to learn, and that's the one you want to you want to do, okay? And also. The hands still strong and healthy. The people willing to pay more. Thank you. Okay. 
when we come to this part of the hair right up through here, you know, you have hair all down in here and hair up in here, but there's a void there, there's no hair. This is where a lot of you may make mistakes, okay? What happens here is if I keep going all the way across, I'm gonna have like a short hole right here, okay? So either you wanna take a section out, leave it out, or you wanna stop back behind the ear and pull everything back to it, okay? So if you pull it back, it's gonna not really cut a big hole in there. So you'll probably see when you're doing layers right around there, this is where you have to be careful. How many of you have done that? I'm wasting my hands. <laughs> I have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Michael, any advice on choosing those hair shears? It's overwhelming. Like, is it just fit? Is it just trial and error? Is it... It's a little bit of everything, you know. Um, I went and, when I started off in barber college, I had cheap, cheap scissors. They didn't have good ones at the time. You know, if you got them in, a, in Germany, they were like the best, and that's usually Japan. Um, I like cobalt and titanium shears. There's a lot of good brands. Um, I know students are kind of a little bit more on a budget. I would say Joyco makes a good shear that's not overly priced. It's a good starter shear. And not Joyco, um, Joel. Joel. That was the J? Yeah. Yeah. They're not real overpriced, but they have good quality. And I think that's good for people starting off. Yeah, I'm not going to pay a whole, whole lot. You know. And I think more importantly, it's just also, these are the tools of your trade. So, eventually you'll start investing a little bit more into it, but it's how you take care of your tools. So if you leave a bunch of hair in it, and it's all caked with like hairspray and gum, it's going to dull your tools. So make sure you clean your tools, you oil them, you keep them in a nice, safe place. Um, keep your tools of the trade. Disrespect them. Okay, they'll last a long time. I still have my scissors from when I was in school, and they work great. Um, get them sharpened occasionally. The sharp shears definitely won't rip the shreds out of your client's hair. Okay, so I'm pulling the hair in the front back. Okay, so back over here, so it travels back, and that way I'm going to avoid having like a hole. That really sucks when that happens. About that. Excuse me, one more question. Let's say that you're a professional and you have the money to buy the best scissors. Oh, you got to talk to Alan. Alan likes What would you buy? Like, if you won the lottery? <laughs> I definitely, uh, personally, um, I like you talked about the cobalt. I like Japanese and German shears. Japanese and German, um, I find, have a very, very strong steel, um, so I don't have to sharpen them as often. They stay really sharp. Um, that's a personal preference. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the price range, I mean, they can go from around like around three, four hundred dollars to like in the thousands. So yeah. just find one that you're comfortable with that fits your hand well. Um, whether you want it like straight up and down or an offset handle, things like that. The comfort is very important as well for you. Can't talk about a shoe. I have a collection of a shear more than... Oh, yes, he does. You know, I <laughs> give the scissor more. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it could worth like over $20,000. Okay. Uh, the one I have with me right now, it could worth like around 5000 And I have like eight, eight or, you know, like eight pair of scissors. Uh, the scissor thing is you want to take care of, you know. You cannot use the shear and throw it away with a junk of your jaw and stuff. Okay? You can look at two different blades and they have to sit straight and perfectly on a straight blade so they can be able to cut the hair. Right? And if you put anything heavy on the top of it or anything smaller on between of it, you will ruin your shear. It doesn't matter how much you spend. You could spend twenty dollars here, but you know how to take care. You still do hair very well. I know a lot of people doing hair now a day for twenty or thirty years. They just use like twenty dollar pair of shoes. You know what I mean? So that the thing is like everything you do from today beginning work like you as student. So try to get inspiration as much as you can. But remember, everything we do, everything you learn, 
have to live from the foundation. If you don't have a strong foundation, you cannot be the top of today. Okay, like me right now, I still travel for learning and teaching at the same time. I learn every day, every moment I have. I don't care who they are. I don't care, even I can learn from the students as well. You know, in Asia, in Asia, they have amazing, crazy technique people. Any color, they can get it out easy. You know, even red, metallic dye or whatever, they can get it out completely. Okay, they have time, and they don't have the room like what we have here. They can get them out easy. So that's what I want to learn, and that's what I want to, to, to get even more. Why is that? Because the knowledge is never end. And that's the reason why I could become who I am today without working with any company. Okay, with a company like, you know, when you work company, for sure company will write about you, polish you up and put you up, you know, like, no, just kidding. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm an independent uh, educator. And I did, and last year, I what, how, how, how many times have you been back in Vietnam? Uh, about 30 some, I'm not really sure. Okay. I'm, I'm very hot, you know, I'm very hot, and they pay me oh, big money, <laughs> you know, big money to travel, especially international. I can do everything. I can do it from up to styling, blow dry, any job for hair, I can do it. You know, blow dry hair, I do very well. Yeah. We're okay. talking about education. I think that is one of the main things. Everybody says education, education, but there's something to it. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. When I was in beauty college, at first I thought, man, this is going to take forever. I'm not going to get this down. And when I was finishing beauty college, well, I've been there longer than everybody else at that point. You know? And I'm thinking, wow, I'm good now because I was comparing myself to the other students. And you don't know what you don't know until you know it. That's true. So I was thinking, when I first got out of beauty college, I was thinking, man, I'm great. I could do anything. And five years goes by, and I thought back to what I knew then, and I think, man, I've learned a whole bunch since then. I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And so then I think, but I'm good now. And so then another five years go by, and you look at what you didn't know or what you've learned, and, you know, think, man, I wasn't any good then either. I mean, I might have been good, but I wasn't never, I, didn't, I wasn't a know-it-all. You're never a know-it-all. And we're always, like, continue learning, and I think it's important to go to classes, focus on what you're interested in. You could like specialize in anything you want in this business. You could do weddings, you could do color, you could do haircutting. You know, personally, I like doing haircutting and color because you know they go together. It's not complete unless it's you know one's not complete without the other. So you know, learn what you can. Usually, if I go to the classes, hair color. You know, I love hair color. If you'd like to see some of my work, you can check it out online on Facebook under uh, Michael Yoakum. Alan has like hundreds of photos of his work, so you can check his work out. Uh, check me out. Check him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alan. We're yes. just telling you you're doing on the stage earlier in the booth. This is. He was using uh, in the booth. He was doing the balayage with our product Offenage <coughs> called Light Lightener. Seven levels of lift on and off scalp. And it has the hydrolyzed collagen in it. Where's that model at? And now she's oh, getting she's still, Okay, yep. we do right it. There, there. That's what you're saying. Okay, okay, okay thank you. Uh-huh. And what he was talking about, both of them, were about education. When I got out of school, and I went to a very prestigious school, um, coloring was still very scary to me. It's very abstract. Did I stop and just say, oh, well, I'm not going to do color? No, I continued my education. I took every single class that I could find. Um, whatever brand, even if it wasn't a brand that I was uh, not using, continued the education. And now I'm a color educator for Offenage. So keep striving to be better than your last haircut, your last color. You're going to grow and improve. and you're, clientele is going to come in there. You treat each single person who comes and sits in your chair, even if you have one client, you give them the best rocking color and rocking cut that you can, and that person's gonna go and share with other people, and pretty soon you'll have two, then three, then four, 
and I'll keep going. Yeah, and hair color theory is hair color theory. You know, if you don't like the color brand you're using, if you know how to use color, you could use any brand you want. It all basically works the same. So hair color theory is something that you really got to learn. You know, like she says, the color chart. Learn the color chart, learn the remaining pigment contribution. And porosity is one of the main things in hair color. Okay? It really is. Like what happens if you have long hair that's really porous and you put ash on there? Who knows? It goes green. He knows. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's going to grab the, the base tones. What happens is when you have grab or really messed up hair, good porosity, it picks up the cool tones, it rejects the warm tones. If you have really healthy hair, you have bad porosity, it rejects the cool tones and it wants to pick up the warm tones. So often when you're doing a hair color, you may want to start off like with more of a natural series and then maybe warm it up as you go to the ends. Because if you use the same color from scalp to ends, it's, like a, it's not going to be even usually. It'll be like nice and bright down here and drab or ugly on the ends. So you want to usually adjust your formula for the ends. Okay, go back to the foundation. On the day one, I first started, I started at the barber, like Michael Yoka says, but I started doing it for eight years. And uh, my uh, my first teachers and my lifetime teacher, whoever I have learned a lot from you, I have to spend at least six months to holding my shear, holding my scissor, uh, maybe my razor, my clipper, and practice every day, every single day, from the morning until it close. Just sit down, do thing, and if I do it wrong, they correct me and have to follow up with the direction. They say, if you do it right, you will not hurt yourself. <laughs> when you do it right, you stand up in the mirror and you do it in front of the customer, the customer will feel more comfortable to sit down and let you cut their hair. Okay. So that's why I have to listen to his direction. And I have been doing 32 years you know, of my stuff. I don't have any couple problem. I don't have any back problem. I don't have anything problem in my body. And every day I could see like 12 or 20 customers to the business. And I do like 80% of my business to 90% of my business in college. I always work with one or two assistants. So that's the reason why I still do love what I do. I love what you know I have. And I love learning. Like when I go back to Vietnam, can you imagine that? I learned one technique to get a red out, metallic dye out, and also hand out, set nicely. And also, I able to get that gentleman Asian thick, rich red pigment right there. He just hair very important. I can make his hair like white, white like paper, <laughs> with none of the hair breaking up. So, which is like there are a lot of things we cannot do here, but out there in the world we can do it. You know, with different way. No matter what time you do it, you can make it happen. So all. You do uh, to put yourself in another box and start learning. So that's why I love to learn. I love to do new things. I want to look at a new idea, new technique. I make everything for my own. I don't have to follow anyone. I don't have to be someone. I just be myself. Whatever makes the customer happy, whatever makes it work, I will do it. Don't you agree? Yes, I agree. Any last questions? Yes, we're at the booth right before. I don't use any calm come through. Why is that? Any question? Any question? Even when I do body apps, when I put the bleach on, I never come through. Why is that? Okay, go back to the foundation. Any solution contain of the pH level more than 8. Okay. Let's say the pH level more than 8. So the pH level more than 8 will just square up your hair structure. It's 
expanding up and down the hair cuticle. And it's a lotion. Bleach color, highlight, straightening, Japanese straightening, and it's a lotion. So with that, when you put on the hair, the hair already starts swelling. And you use the cold, the hard stuff to come through, which is you already damaged the hair. You're already breaking out the hair. You didn't know that. Right? So for me, I use more product. I use more product to apply. I remain the moist. And also, I give the hair my side. I try to smooth it out as much as I can. Even though the hair has been damaged, been open, but with a pH level more than 8, it's already activated here, soften at the hair structure, and by the meantime, you use your physical massage, you know, which you already smooth out, your treatment in hair better. Right? So you don't need to use the other amazing stuff. And don't ever rely on any amazing stuff. I have bad experience for myself because I think that we keep the hair not breaking up but the half of the hair breaking up. Because I believe the company advertising this one when you push over the top of this the hair still okay. Yes the hair still okay after I rinse it off but when I come through a bunch of hair stay in my head. So that's why I don't think anything medical or anything you do everything you believe believe yourself believe your technique Believe what you understand and you do think better. Okay? So that's why I strongly and strongly suggest you don't even dare or don't even fail to learn. Spend, you know, as much as you can for, you know, education. Okay, that's the only way to make you better hair style. Okay? And don't even just sit down and just dream, oh yeah. Oh, guy tang, he does two hair a day, book for a year, I want to be like him. You know, charge $800 or one for one. No. You have to see who you are, where you at, and who you work and work. Start with anything you have around you. Try to build yourself and do anything different. Because for the business, the biggest com competition is to do the same way with other people. Right? You have to do different. The other people, they so busy, they have a lot of clients, but their customer service is so bad. Why do you compete with them by your customer service? Or better skill, better product, you know, better stuff. So that's the only way I think that better and smarter and nicer on competition. Okay? We don't compete with a price. We don't compete with that word. Okay? You have to learn how to make yourself different. I learned that philosophy from many, many top people in the world. He right now a billion dollars. You know, he can make a billion dollars a year. It's the only thing he says, okay, my idea is different. If I do the other ideas similar with the other people, with the other self, I would not make this company go up. He got fired. Okay, he got fired. I don't want to mention that person. I don't want to mention the case. This could hurt with somebody. He got fired. And he went to Paris. And he saw the moose, bought the moose. And he bought the moose in, uh, in France. They put the hair blow dry, styling, you can do everything. He brought that moose over the United States and asked the person who made And that person who made the canvas, who made the Chinese from Hong Kong. And it worked to make it one dollar seventy-five cents. Okay, and now his service and his sell worldwide a few dollars <laughs> because his idea is different. You do everything different, even for sell for service. If you do anything different, even your way, your style different. Trust me, you do have your own mind. Trust me, you do have your own future. Future of your hand is not my hand, and not on Andre's hand, or not in that master hand. It's all about your hand. We all can give you the keys. You know, learning is never end. Learning never waits. Thank you.